there were plenty of Sunday surprises in Minnesota. Youth is served while veterans hang tough. It was a perfect weekend in South Africa as the winning team lives up to its name. We recap a wild final day of competition next on Game Central. Hi everybody, welcome to Game Central as we recap week number two of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games semifinals. I'm Sean Woodland alongside former CrossFit Games competitor and current seminar staff member Wes Pyatt. We will uh, start with the Granite Games and we know who the athletes are who are going to the CrossFit Games, but maybe we have more questions than answers right now? Yeah, for sure, Sean. I mean, we saw that Mal is human, mm -hmm. right? With a uh, 12th place finish on that event five. Tim Paulson is still a Legit, good for him, and Chandler Smith, we didn't see his engine exactly what we thought it would be. So, Day three of individual competition is presented by FitAid, the official recovery beverage of the CrossFit Games. Three events closed out the final day of competition for the individuals. Events five and six were done back to back, and then event seven, Hang On, had a very exciting finish, that 15-yard Double dumbbell overhead walking lunge definitely provided some uh, nerve-wracking moments for both the men and the women. Chase Ingram and Tommy Marquez have been in Minnesota all weekend long calling the action, and they have more on what was a crazy final day for the women. Well, I think we can finally take a deep breath because what a weekend it was on the women's side of the competition. Ariel Lowen taking first place, been knocking on the door for years finally getting her trip to Madison. What a phenomenal return to competition. Last time we really saw her back in 2018, she competed at the South Regional, unknowingly a couple of weeks pregnant. Flash forward to 2021, she's now a mother, and she gets to walk away as the Granite Games champion and earn her first invite to the CrossFit Games. Just an amazing weekend, closed so well. First, first, and a fourth. That is something to get excited about going into the rest of the season. Something I'm very excited about is look at our teenage athletes, Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey. Mal was just four points away from winning the whole thing. The question was, could they even qualify? And they almost won the entire semifinal. And more importantly, both of these teenage athletes had a spot clinched. Just an event prior had a 100-plus point lead ahead of the cut line, so really they could take some chances. I really love the tenacity from each one of them attacking these events at various times throughout the weekend, and I think the hype is real, and everyone can get really excited, looking forward to what they could bring to the women's division that is already stacked when we get to Madison. And going back to Ariel Lowen is that she had one heck of a last day of competition coming out right out of the gates, winning event five, and event six to propel her not just in contention, but to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, you look at how some athletes close a weekend that can really dictate the momentum that they carry into their training for the next month. And, you know, Ariel Lowen started with a strong performance in the snatch, a little bit back and forth, hanging in tough inside the top 10 and inside the top five all weekend long. But really what it came down to was the final day of competition. Back-to-back -back events, she comes out, leads from the front both times, bucking the trend from previous heats. First place in back-to-back -back one, a first place in back-to-back -back two. Outduels some of the best in the sport, especially some of these young teenagers that were really just setting some mind-blowing paces at the start of things. And when she walks away, all said and done, three finishes inside of the top five, two event wins, and what better way to put an exclamation mark on your weekend and your first trip to the CrossFit Games. Ariel followed up by Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey. Like we said, all the hype and anticipation coming in, and they absolutely delivered. Struggled a little bit in five and six, but they were able to bounce back, which is a very good sign for maybe how they'll handle the big lights in Madison, Wisconsin. It's one thing to take chances and come up short, and it's another thing to take chances when you already have a lead or you've built such a big backboard based on your fitness level that you can recover recover from it. And I, we saw that with how Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey fought through some mistakes. Mal O'Brien starts the day off with a 12th place finish, her worst finish of the weekend, and she bounces back with two second place finishes to close things out. Emma Carey gets a tough no rep at the end of that event. You know what, bounces back, finishes the next portion, and both of them were able to do enough in other areas to where they could afford to take those chances. Emma was fourth, fourth, and then a 17th in that final event. Didn't hurt her because she had it clinched, was able to take that chance. That level of tenacity and willing to go after top performances, regardless of what happens, is what's gonna make you successful at the top of this sport. 
and not just with the teams, but two veterans. Alessandra Pacelli is making her trip back to Madison, Wisconsin. She has said this is her final year of individual competition. She makes it in. One veteran just missing a qualifying spot to Madison with Christy Aramo O'Connell, but she still has another chance. Yeah, starting with Alessandra Pacelli, had the chance to speak with her this weekend before things got kick-started. And she said, this is my fa last time as an individual. I'm going to maybe try and start a family, maybe focus on masters, do some things outside of the sport. Where if you look at how she closed the weekend, two seventh place finish and then an event win when she needed it most, showcasing some of that veteran guile to get her back inside the top five and going back to the game for a ninth time. And then Christy Arrow O'Connell didn't quite get the finish that she wanted. Two finishes outside of the top 10 to start the day. A 10th place finish to close. Close, but no cigar for her. That's why we have this last chance qualifier, because there's some very talented athletes that come up just short, and she'll have an opportunity to earn an invite later this month. And not to mention, Caroline Connors on the outside looking in does what she needs to do in the final event and gets her first trip to Madison. And we are just so excited of the mix of athletes that will be making their trip from the Granite Games from Ariel Lowen getting her first chance to Phenom teenagers, Alessandra Pacetti and veterans. So an exciting field of athletes on the women's side coming from the Granite Games to Madison, Wisconsin. That'll do it from here for Egan, Minnesota. Tommy, good job. Great job indeed, guys. Let's go to the men's competition where it was also an exciting finish there. Saxon Panchik is your winner with 580 points. Chandler Smith comes in second. Tim Paulson in third, just seven points back of Smith. Roy Gamboa, he punches into the top five. And Colton Mertens, he qualifies for the CrossFit Games. He beats out Nick Matthew by just three points. Tim Paulson in third place. We didn't talk about him a whole lot until now. He really didn't do anything flashy, but he didn't let the few mistakes he made cost him. He was just consistent throughout. Yeah, Sean, we saw uh, 18th place on event mm -hmm. three not get into his head. And in fact, he came back and had an event win on the back-to-back -back event two using the speed of his box step overs with that D-ball. That was just insane, Tim. So good job there. And congratulations going to the game. Yeah. First time as a dad too. So right on, bro. Yeah, pretty awesome. Chandler Smith, second place going to the games. Obviously, that is the goal. But did he live up to expectations? Yeah, you know, I... I wasn't expecting Chandler's engine to look the way that it did. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that by working with Ben Bergeron, those guys over at Comp Train, that really they spent a lot of time focusing on cleaning up his technique. We saw that in event one on the snatch, which looked amazing. And we'll see him peak at the games with that engine is, mm -hmm. is what I'm hoping. And he peaked at the end of this competition as well, closing out with an event win to really solidify his hold on second place overall. The team competition, we basically finished where we started, Omnia. They led basically the whole way. They get 647 points, the only team to get more than 600 points. They are your winners. Move fast, lift, heavy, pardon me, move fast, lift, heavy crew. They finished second. I love it. They finished in third. Eighth day gym, they made a comeback on the final day. More on that in a second. Then Ocean State's finest. They hang on to fifth place. And remember what Christine Middleton did on day number one with that 265 pound clean and jerk that helped her team win that event. That may have been the difference of them either not making it to the games and now booking a trip to Madison, Wisconsin. But Omnia, they basically pass every test this weekend. Yeah, for sure, Sean. When we think about the type of test that Dave's gonna throw at these teams, he, wanna see, he wants to see, are, do they, are they strong? Can they work together as a team? And then also individually, what is your fitness like? And if we go back and look at the results from this weekend with Omnia, we had a sixth and a second place respective finish on the snatch and the clean jerk, so they're strong, we know that. A second place finish on Worm DT, which is all about working together as a team. And then a first place finish on the bicouplet twist, which is a total individual test. So these guys look like they're somebody to watch at the CrossFit Games. You mentioned eighth day gym, they go from sixth to fourth, courtesy of an event win in that final event. And you gotta say something about a team or something to be said about a team that really saves their best for last when they absolutely have to have it. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's nothing like when your back is against mm -hmm. the wall, right? You've got nothing else to, to lose. You might as well go for it. And we really saw it on that final workout with the worm where 
you put them side by side with other teams that were doing burpees over that worm and their speed was next level compared to everybody else. So good job to them on punching their ticket to the games. Team competition is sponsored by Romwad. Improve your mobility and athletic performance with Romwad. Visit romwad.com for a free seven day trial. What's the thing that stood out to you the most after three days of competition there at the Granite Games? This was a tough one to watch yeah. for me. Uh, I've been around the sport for a while and so I saw all of my old school athletes, you know, the Alessandra Pacellis, the Tim Paulsons, the Caroline Connors, congratulations to you, the Rory Gamboas. You're rooting for them, but mm -hmm. on the other side, it's so exciting to watch these new teenagers, you know, Mal and Emma come mm -hmm. up and Saxon as well with the new guard coming through. So it was a little bit of old school versus new school this weekend. It was definitely a lot of fun to watch a great event there uh, in Minnesota and thanks to everybody involved certainly enjoyed watching it as a fan the fitness in Cape Town that was the other semifinal that took place this weekend for the men a veteran dominated we had a great race on the women's side and on the team side it was all about perfection Day three of individual competition is presented by FitAid for a special offer. And to learn more, head to drinkfitaid.com. The Fitness in Cape Town closed out with two events for the individuals. Event six was pinball, some dumbbell handstand pushups, and some D ball cleans, pistols, an arm over the head, and one front rack carry. And then event seven, that is the correct name, the Frinals because it mirrors Fran with toes to bar and some thrusters as well as some bar muscle ups and then some heavier thrusters uh, in the final round there. For the men, Jason Smith, he's heading back to the CrossFit Games, 668 total points. He didn't win a single event on day three, but he still wins by 36 points over Ruan Duvenage. And for the women, we had that great race developing between Dinah Swift and Michelle Baznet, and Michelle Baznet gets the best of that. She winds up with the overall lead at the end of the competition, and she is heading to the CrossFit Games. We were really looking forward to seeing this race play out on the final day, but what did it come down to between Bazinet and Swift? Yeah, it really came down to seeing Dinah go to singles on those mm -hmm. handstand push-ups, and that gave Michelle the edge that she needed to squeak out a win in event six and carry that confidence and momentum into the final event, knowing that she just had to hang with Dinah in order to get that coveted first place spot. Uh, but Dinah is really somebody to watch in that last chance qualifier and next year. So Dinah, keep up that hard work because I think you got a spot at the games next year if you want it. Jason Smith going back to the CrossFit Games, not a surprise there. He's a veteran, he knows what he's doing. He's 36 years old and very clearly experience pays off for him. Yeah, uh, Jason, you'll get a message from me pretty soon <laughs> asking exactly what you do from the moment you wake up to the moment that you go to bed. But congratulations to you, sir, on making your way back to the games. Well, well, well deserved. Three event wins uh, to put himself in great position there on those first two days and then sails to a competition victory and back to the CrossFit Games for Jason Smith. On the team side, perfection. The Eichstad Mighty Oaks, they sweep all seven events. A perfect 700 points. And then the other team from their gym, the Golden Oaks, they finish in a points tie, but they take third place behind uh, CrossFit Tiger Valley. Always impressive when you sweep something like that and when you go back to the quarterfinals, they have participated in 12 total events. They won 11, but look, the games, that's a whole different animal when you get to Madison. Yeah, the games are a whole different animal, but what they've got going for them is the company that they hang around with. Having that extra team that is gonna be helping them train for the next month, getting ready for the games that ended up third in this mm -hmm. event right here is gonna be huge for these guys. So while they are coming from a region that we wouldn't expect to do as well at the games, having that extra team there to train with them and hopefully push them and get ready for the games mm -hmm. is gonna be huge. Team competition is sponsored by Romwad. Improve your athletic performance and mobility with Romwad. Visit romwad.com for a free seven day trial. What was the thing that stood out the most to you in South Africa? Well, it was great to see Michelle not have to go all that way for nothing, right? So <laughs> congratulations, Michelle, on punching your ticket to the games. But really, for me, it was Dinah. And Dinah, I want to see that you keep training and you keep working on those weaknesses because I think that if you do, you have a spot next year for sure. We continue to creep closer to the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games. And if you want to be there in person, tickets are on sale now. You can head to games.crossfit.com for more information on that. And if you still want to volunteer, you can do that and be part of everything behind the scenes at the Alliant Energy Center. Head to games.crossfit.com for more information on that. 
More semifinal action next week. Three more events. They are all virtual. The Brazil CrossFit Championship, the Lowlands Throwdown, and the German Throwdown. And we will have complete coverage of those three virtual events from the studio starting next Friday. So be sure to be here with us for all of that. Thank you so much for watching this weekend. We hope you enjoyed all the action. For Wes Pyatt, I'm Sean Woodland, and we'll talk to you next time.